Hello students, in this video we will discuss the process of concept formation, how a concept is being formed, what is the purpose of concept formation and what is its aim. So let's start this video. The process of concept formation has three important aspects, perception, abstraction and generalization. प्रत्यय निर्माण की जो प्रक्रिया है उसके तीन इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स हैं यानी कोई भी कांसेप्ट जो फॉर्म होगा वो इन तीन मेजर स्टेजेस से गुजरेगा फर्स्ट स्टेज इज परसेप्शन सेकंड इज एब्स्ट्रैक्शन एंड द थर्ड इज जनरलाइजेशन ऑफ अ कांसेप्ट फर्स्ट वी परसीव अ कांसेप्ट वी फॉर्म एन आईडिया अबाउट अ कांसेप्ट एंड देन वी इंटरनलाइज और एब्स्ट्रैक्ट दैट आईडिया एंड देन Uh, whenever we uh, found, we are in a different situation, we try to uh, compare or contrast whatever idea we have, and on the basis of that, we form a general um, view of the present situation. So, um, let's discuss the three uh, aspects in detail. Now, perception. Perception. is an experience or learning in any form is the starting point of the process of concept formation yani jab hame kisi cheez ki experience hoti hai ya hum kisi cheez ko learn karte hain that is the starting point of the process of concept formation concept formation ki jo shuruaat hai wo experience se hoti hai and this experience we get through our five any of the five sense organs like eyes nose ear tongue or skin okay so by seeing hearing tasting smelling uh, or uh, like uh, uh, touching so our perceptions or imaginary experiences formal or informal learning provide opportunities for getting mental images of the object persons or events यानी हमारे जो ये परसेप्शंस हैं या जो हमारी इमेजिनरी एक्सपीरियंसेस हैं हमारे माइंड में जो हम फॉर्मल या इनफॉर्मल घर में या स्कूल में या किसी भी पब्लिक प्लेस से जो हम ये एक्सपीरियंस करते हैं ये प्रोवाइड करती है एक अपॉर्चुनिटी जहां से कि हमें मेंटल इमेजेस मिलते हैं अबाउट किसी भी ऑब्जेक्ट के बारे में किसी पर्सन के बारे में किसी इवेंट के बारे में राइट जब भी, भी कभी हम कोई ऑब्जेक्ट देखते हैं घर में बाहर स्कूल में रेलवे स्टेशन पे पार्क पे कुछ भी हम देख के आते हैं किसी से मिल के आते हैं कोई इवेंट हम जानते हैं कोई स्टोरी के जरिए हमें कोई सुनाता है तो ये पांच सेंस ऑर्गेन्स का इस्तेमाल होता है और हम कोई ऑब्जेक्ट किसी पर्सन या किसी इवेंट के बारे में लर्न करते हैं किसी कोई एक्सपीरियंस फॉर्म करते हैं तो ये होता है परसेप्शन यहाँ से कंसेप्ट फॉर्मेशन की शुरुआत होती है ऐसा कहेंगे अब नाउ थ्रू दिस इमेज जस्ट आई वॉन्ट टू make you understand that perception can be different for different people like this is number 6 for this girl this is number 6 but for this old man it can be nine so perception can be different for different people how they are perceiving how they are understanding or how they are making sense of that particular image or experience or that person or any event Now the next step in the process of concept formation is abstraction. The mind analyzes the perceived images and synthesizes what is common to all, neglecting what is particular. This process of observing similarities and commonness is named as abstraction. यानी जो mind है वो analyze करती है perceived images, जो भी कुछ images, persons या event के बारे में हमें एक idea होती है उसको हम synthesize करते हैं एक आइडिया फॉर्म करते हैं एंड दैट इज कॉमन थिंग्स वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉमनिटीज अमंग डिफरेंट इमेजेस ट्राइंग टू नेग्लेक्ट ऑल द स्पेसिफिक और पर्टिकुलर थिंग एंड दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑब्जर्विंग सिमिलैरिटीज एंड कॉमननेस और ये जो हम सिमिलैरिटीज और कॉमननेस ऑब्जर्व करते हैं सो दैट वी कैन फॉर्म एन आइडिया इज कॉल्ड एब्स्ट्रैक्शन नाउ आफ्टर abstraction comes generalization after making such observation in the form of abstraction 
for a number of times the child is able to generalize or form a general idea about the common properties of some objects or events on account of this generalization he will develop a concept about these things or events like jab hum commonalities ko samajhne lagte hain aur uske aapas mein ek bond banane lagte hain and uh, on the basis of that we form a general idea about that concept and now not only we recognize this particular dog but we will also understand that this is also a dog this is also a dog and these all are different types of dogs irrespective of the difference in their color or appearance so in this what a child does the child neglected all the dissimilarities and try to form an idea about different types of dog on the basis of the similarities they have in between so this is called generalization now let's discuss the purpose and aim of concept formation purpose concept formation as teaching strategy is to have the students examine carefully some objects actions or processes and to think about a method for classifying so the purpose of concept formation is to help students examine any like object person or event or action or processes so that they can have an understanding of different classes of things or objects and they learn how to classify them how to differentiate them how to put them in different categories uh, for like organizational purpose like uh, if if they are learning about fruits then uh, and they are learning about vegetables and they are learning about uh, other stuff then they must learn how to classify uh, like uh, different uh, like uh, Uh, fruits on the basis of uh, certain characteristics and um, they they would also be able to differentiate it with vegetables okay and uh, in the same manner like uh, if a student is learning about animals like uh, he is uh, he, he is uh, learning about the on the basis of like uh, some animals who live on land and they can be pet and wild some animals who are aerial or they, they are uh, like uh, uh, there are some uh, animals uh, on the basis of what they eat and on the basis of that they learn to classify like some some are plant any eating animals they are called her herbivores and then there are like meat or flesh eating animals they are carnivores and so uh, uh, these are the different categories or the classification on the basis of which a child can differentiate between different animals so basically the purpose of concept formation is to help students uh, learn so much about an idea that they can classify different objects and it they do it in a very right manner now the second thing is aim of concept formation concept formation helps us to disregard what is inessential by creating idealized structure that focus on what is essential so in like uh, while we were discussing the aspects of uh, or the uh, process of concept formation we were talking about first is perception and then after perception when we have experience of anything then we go to the next level and that is abstraction and on the level of abstraction what we do we usually try to neglect the dissimilarities or we try to like uh, understand a concept on the basis of the similarities they have and that is the reason that is that is what actually the aim of concept formation is is to understand that what is in essential uh, and what is essential to form concepts so i hope you must have uh, understood the process of concept formation what is the purpose and aim of concept formation thanks for watching